Splatoon 3 introduced two new weapon classes to the franchise, but that's clearly not enough for some people. So with the help of some friends, we've created six brand new enticing weapon classes for Splatoon 3. Let's start with this thing. It looks like a goo tuber, except it's very much not. Dubbed the Inferno Splatter, this thing sprays a continuous line of ink that starts out super weak, only doing 50 damage per second, to over 600 damage per second. But but it's not all fun in games. See, it has long range and becomes very strong, but that strength takes time to get. Holding down ZR causes the Inferno Splatter to spray out ink like a water hose. It's continuous, not like the bullets that come out of other weapons. The spray starts out doing 50 DPS with a range of 4 tiles. However, if you continue to hold down ZR, the spray increases in range and strength, reaching a max of 6 tiles and 600 DPS. And while it can do up to 600 DPS, it only lasts for barely a second, and you have to have a full ink tank to even reach this level of strength. Once you run out of ink, go into swim form, or stop firing, you reset back to 50 DPS and 4 tiles of range. The levels of strength go from 50 DPS and 4 tiles for the first second, 150 DPS and 4.5 tiles for the second second, 300 DPS and 5 tiles for the third second, 350 DPS and 5.5 tiles for the fourth second, all the way up to 600 DPS and 6 tiles for the 6th and a half second. And yeah, this thing's ink tank only lasts for 7.5 seconds, meaning that the 600 damage had better be capitalized on for specials like Crab and Bubbler. There would also be an indicator under the reticle showing the strength level that the weapon is at. And while the ink tank doesn't last long, it recovers ink much quicker than most weapons. The weapon is really good at taking out long-ranged threats, being a great supportive tool, and taking out HP specials but paired with not great mobility, the slow time it takes to make this thing an actual threat, and basically any bomb thrown at it which forces it to restart its strength mechanic, it would be pretty balanced in my opinion. And paired with point sensor to help locate opponents while not being a costly sub, along with big bubbler to give it some protection against bombs and protection for you and your team, this hose-like weapon, not at all based on the inferno tower from Clash of Clans, would really give a new spin on the supportive weapon type. But even that doesn't come compared to the splat anchor. This weapon is a ball and chain type weapon where you swing it around when you hold the ZR button. When you let go of the ZR button, the anchor shoots forward and when it lands, it releases a shock wave, kind of like wave breaker, but not nearly as far. This weapon class is very slow, but it can deny a big area if used properly. The perfect kit for this weapon would be point sensor and kraken. Point sensor so you can always know where your opponents are so you can deny them an entry point before they get too close. And kraken as a special in case the opponent does get really close so you can get them to back off. In the past, I've had a few ideas on how a reworked Stingray could work, so my weapon class is kind of based around those ideas, just nerfed to a main weapon status instead. Inspired by high pressure water cannons, I introduce to you the Washer weapon class, which specializes in a very unique supportive playstyle. What makes Washers interesting are their constant and consistent stream of high pressure ink. While low in damage, it has the special ability to slightly knock back enemy players, bringing the idea of air denial up to the next level. Now, obviously hearing that, you could imagine this has potential to be one of the most toxic weapon classes and niches in the entire game, and could be made much worse when playing on maps with many areas to fall off. So I have a few precautions in place to make sure it feels as fair and fightable as possible. First of all, while this weapon's max range would be comparable to a jet squelcher, it would first need to build up pressure to reach that range. This wouldn't take that long, about a full second to go from air spray range to max range from simply holding the trigger down. However, it would also have the ability to sort of charge hold if you went into your ink after it's reached maximum range, allowing you to pop out with full power. As I've already stated, weapons in this class would have very low damage output, with the main washer, simply named the power washer as of now, roughly killing in 50 frames or a little under a second, being one of the lowest time to kills in the entire game. The weapon class would also be extremely ink hungry, requiring you to refill roughly every 6 seconds with only 5 of those seconds spraying at maximum range. This would ensure the user couldn't just spray for long periods of time, and that paired with the ability to charge hold would make the weapon much more strategic to use. Lastly is the elephant in the room and the main gimmick of the weapon class, the knockback. Don't worry, it's nothing too strong or powerful. It would be more weak. Think of how a 
crack in knockback feels, where it's less about being pushed back and more about being denied moving forward. The power of the effect will also decay a bit closer to maximum range. Now, since the idea of the main weapon has been covered, there's a few kits I could see working with this weapon pretty well. First is Splashwall Inkstorm. Splashwall will allow the weapon to plant itself in advantageous positions, protecting itself from longer range weapons and bombs. And Inkstorm plays into its area control niche quite well, even supplementing its low damage output with its useful chip damage. Next is Splat Bomb Big Bubbler. Splat Bomb would give the weapon a powerful killing tool, as that's something it lacks of course with its very low damage. Big Bubbler would also come in handy as support for your team, and mixed with the main weapon's knockback would make sure your opponents stay away. Lastly is Toxic Mist and Killer Whale 5.1. Toxic Mist's area denial could be very strong in conjunction with the main weapon's knockback, and the Killer Whale, on top of displacing the opponents, could also serve in a meaningful chip damage to further assist the main weapon. And as the video goes on, the weapons get crazier and crazier, which is why this next one is gonna blow everyone away. The Splat Gauntlets. These robotic hands strap onto players and have an almost endless amount of uses. You can dash, punch, combo, and even perform a mini splashdown. Holding down ZR will cause the nozzles on the palm of the gauntlets to light up and begin inking below you. Wherever the player moves, ink will spray below and behind them, which does not damage enemy players. To damage players, you can tap ZR to perform a combo attack or jump and press ZR to slam into the ground, splashdown style. Let's start with the combo, a simple 3 hit punch style combo attack. This combo sees each hand extend from the wrist, just like how the arms and arms work, and they have 3.5 tiles of range. The damage varies on how close you are to your opponent, with close directs doing 70 damage and far directs only doing 40, with everything else being in between. Now, onto the mini splashdown, which is performed by pressing B and then ZR. This significantly toned down splashdown has a radius of half a tile and only splats if the enemy is directly inside the splashdown. If they aren't fully inside, it does 70 damage, and if they're only close to it, they take 30 damage. It uses half of the player's ink tank to do and takes a whole second before they can start refilling ink again. It's a very high risk but high reward type thing. While it can push people off the tower and take them by surprise if you get them from the high ground, the risk is that the radius for splatting is so tiny that you're left extremely vulnerable if you miss. The activation happens as soon as you press ZR, so while there won't be any panic splashdowns, there will be people who miss the attack and then die from missing. You also must be in kid form to perform the attack, and it's not invincible. It is much quicker than the original splashdown, but along with 0.25 seconds of end lag, you can still die any time the attack is going on. These gauntlets will be paired with fizzy bombs as an approach option and the Kraken Royale for some extra melee action. But gauntlets are like so two minutes ago, so now let's talk about the splattering. This weapon is based off a of boomerang and you get to hold two at a time. It functions like a brush where you have to spam ZR to throw it and doing so will use the short range mode. This mode has the splattering move forward and come back instantly, but if you hold the ZR then this will activate its long range mode. In this mode you throw both at the same time and they go farther and curve back to you in a circular shape. This leaves you more vulnerable but it covers a wide area and using this mode does more damage especially on the way back. So it promotes good spacing and advanced techniques. The kit this weapon will receive is burst bomb and super jumps. With burst bomb it will have amazing combo potential allowing it to secure quick kills. And with super jump it will allow the weapon to paint better and get closer to engage enemies if needed. Okay, but what if I told you about the coolest support weapon yet, which was made by Taro and I'm going to explain here. The Quincer is a low damage short ranged weapon with really good paint and the ability to give ability buffs to your teammates. It has wide paint, think early Splatoon 1 aerospray, with a fire rate comparable to the vanilla splatter shot, being a 4 shot kill and range comparable to the sploosh. However, tapping ZR instead of holding it activates its ability, giving all of your teammates around you a main sub of run speed and swim speed. It's activated similarly to how a special is. You have to charge it by inking the floor. However, no special charge up works to increase the speed in which you can use this ability because it's a part of the weapon and not the special. Different weapons in this class would also have different perks they would give, such as one giving sub saver and main saver and another giving sub power and main power up. The ability would take 100 points to activate and last roughly 10 seconds. And you could 
couldn't start charging it again until it's worn off for everyone. The Quincer comes equipped with Burst Bomb to help it with damage and paint, and Tactic Cooler for even more supportive action.